Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about header testing. So I actually dyno tested these headers compared to the um, regular dyno headers that I usually use for all the dyno testing on the small block Chevy Dyno Mule. So even though this is about a small block Chevy, these same things apply whether it be a small block Chevy, big block Chevy, LS, it doesn't really matter, small block Ford, everything that has an exhaust will have a header and all these same principles apply. Um, so pay attention during this. I will say that as you see the results for this, do not take that as universal because there's a reason why and that's why I'm gonna give this whole long speech, which you're like, great, um, to explain why this is not universal to just this combination. It, it, it it's, cannot always be applied to other situations. So in order to understand the headers, you really have to understand what's going on in the combustion process. So bear with me as I try to explain this. The, um, as you know, the way the air comes in, the air comes in through the intake and out through the exhaust, but that's just the basics. There's a bigger principle that happens. You see what happens is, and this is where things get really interesting. When that exhaust valve opens and the exhaust valves, the exhaust air goes out and it starts coming through this header tube here. Well, what's happening is it's a pressure wave. So it's got a lot of speed and it comes out and it's going really fast until it gets to here, the collector. Once it hits here, because that air is going so fast, it instantly slows down because it's in a bigger area. It creates a shock wave that then travels back up through the header and back through this exhaust port. That's called reversion. Now, most of you in your mind probably have it thinking like this. That's not quite right. That's not how the um, valve events actually happen. You see, the exhaust valve will open, but as it's closing, we open the intake valve. And I know you're thinking, why? Why do we do this? This is called overlap. This is the key to making power in engines. So most people think that the piston drawing down is the first thing that creates vacuum that pulls air into the intake port in an engine. That is incorrect. It actually happens during overlap. When that exhaust gas exits, what it does is it creates a vacuum here. So the air leaving creates a vacuum because the air is left, um, pressure differential. Um, it leaves, create a vacuum here. So we open the intake valve while the exhaust valve is still closing, but not all the way closed, because it will start pulling a vacuum from the intake port. And that's what we want to have happen. Then as what should happen is, as the vacuum starts to decrease from the exhaust, we close the exhaust valve, then the piston starts opening and more keeps coming with it. And that's how it should happen. But here's where headers come into play. What can happen is reversion, which we talked about, the air is coming out, hits here, does a reverse wave. But if you're still, if the reverse wave's coming and you still have a situation like this and your exhaust valve is not closed, the reverse wave now pushes exhaust gases back through here and can come back through the intake valve, causing something called reversion. Now, the small block Chevy Dino Mule was the perfect example of it. And I'm going to show you a picture to show you what I mean. What that picture is, is the Promax Project X 215cc heads that were on the Dino Mule when this test was performed. The heads have since been changed and now the CNC ported heads are on the engine. I've already done dyno testing on that, but I haven't released that video yet. Um, I haven't even released the book on that yet either. Channel members have seen it, but others haven't. But what you're seeing is because whenever you take apart an engine, that's when you can see more of the stuff that you might not have normally saw. What you're looking at when you see the picture is you're going to see that nice, what looks like aluminum section in the intake port, but then you see a bunch of black around it. That is reversion. So essentially what's happened is the exhaust pulse has come back through and gone back through the intake part, uh, port. And then it's right there mixing with the fuel. This reduces power and causes it to not make as much power. Now, even when you're seeing that, the question that you might ask yourself is, and you should be asking is, well, when did it happen though? Remember the RPM range that we did this, it varied, but uh, low side would do 3,500 all the way up to 7,000 RPM. So when did the reversion happen? Was it happening say at 3,500? Was it happening at 4,000 RPM? Was it happening at 7,000 RPM? That's one of those things to tell. It's hard to see from that. All we know is there is reversion, but it's hard to, to get the exact 
RPM point in which the reversion is happening. Because here's the thing with headers. And this, I'm going to give you good news and bad news. Every single header that's made is perfect for at least one combination. The bad part is it may not be your combination. There are so many factors that get, that get played with with the headers that most people just totally overlook. In all fairness, because you can't. See, the great thing about everything I'm going to tell you, it gives you facts and stuff. But for the large majority of you, you can't do a thing about it. And you're like, what do you mean? For instance, a longer header tube, that charge just takes far longer to get down here before it has a reverse pulse that comes up. Getting the timing right to when this valve closes before that pulse comes up is a huge factor that plays a part of the headers. So let's say these are meant to fit a chassis. But let's say I really would like it for be about three inches longer. So this way at 7,000 RPM, and I'm just doing saying three inches longer. It could be three inches shorter. It doesn't matter. But let's say I need it longer or shorter to make a better reversion pulse. Doesn't happen until the valves close and everything goes smoothly. Awesome. So I needed a shorter length. The problem that most of you are going to face is you can't do it. It won't fit your car for one. So let's say it needed to be longer. All right, so we need it longer. Well, what if you're in a car and you just simply don't have the room? Or um, it needs to be shorter, and again, you're in the same position. That's why I say for 90% of you, this is great information to know, and most of you can't do it. What boggles my mind is the dragster guys. You guys have all the room in the world, but you're using your standard dragster headers. Um, you could literally design a header with certain lengths and diameters to get it right, because that's the other thing. It's not even also just the length. It's the width or the diameter of the tube that makes it part. So the smaller the tube, the obviously the more velocity it has, which sounds great. But at a certain point, you create so much velocity that all the air gets out, all the exhaust, exhaust gases get out anyway. So it goes back to the intake port regardless. So then you need a bigger tube. Well, then the bigger tube, you have slower velocity. So then uh, same thing applies. It's more of a shock wave when it comes back. So you have other problems. So it's really about getting it exactly right. And you're like, well, how do you figure that out? Larry Moe created this uh, great program called PipeMax. And what PipeMax does, you enter in your engine specs and it can uh, estimate what tube lengths you need. Now, the, like I said before, it will tell you what you need for a certain RPM. So obviously at a lower RPM versus a higher RPM, you need different tube lengths. So that plays a part. His will tell you what you need. The catch is again, doesn't mean they make a header that's that length for you. A prime example on the truck's all covered up, but my S10 that's underneath this car wrap, its header tubes are extremely long because it has to go around the frame and get to where it needs to be for the collector. It should be shorter. Can't make it shorter, otherwise it's going out through the fender, which I don't want. Several of you are in the same position. So that's essentially what header tubing and is the whole header thing is for. It's not just getting the exhaust gases out. There's so much more that comes into play during the overlap period. And this brings me to the next point. If you can't fix the headers, there's only one other way you can fix exhaust reversion. Well, there's other ways that you can remediate. Like there's things we could do in the port that helps remediate it. For instance, we don't put a back cut on the exhaust valve. Why? Because if you put a back cut on the exhaust valve, it's better for it to flow this, uh, this way, coming towards the chamber, than it is to go that way. So not having a back cut hurts reversion. So it help, it, in other words, it stops the air from coming back into the chamber. So it's better to not have a back cut on the exhaust valve. Um, so that's one thing we could do. We can also leave a step in the port itself. And there's other things too, though, but those are remediation. The one of the other things, and probably the most important thing, because again, it's tough to change the headers, camshaft. If you can get this the valve to close at the appropriate point, so that the timing the reverse pulse before this comes um, back to you, you win. And that's why I think a lot of the camshaft formulas, and there's one that's got a one and then maybe a two and then an eight in it, that I think is garbage. And the reason why I think that is because if you don't take in an effect of the headers, <laughs> then your formula is junk. Because the headers themselves, that whole thing plays a huge part into it. You can get close, but you ain't getting exact. So when someone says this formula will get you the exact header, uh, exact best camshaft you ever need, they're full of crap. Because the headers play such an important part that you're going to have to do some more testing to figure out exactly where it is. 
A formula might get you close, but it ain't getting you exact. And with another degree change or changing the valve events where the exhaust or intake opens dramatically changes those events. So just a small change can make a huge difference from what the formula said because of headers. So you cannot say, well, look, this is a nice Nova header. Try an S10 header that's longer and that same camshaft works. Mm, I don't think so. Ain't the same. Sorry, just isn't working. Now, to this. The dyno headers are extremely long. And I put a picture at the beginning of this video, so hopefully you can go back and look. Those are extremely long and for the reason. On a dyno, we want to have access to our spark plugs. We don't, you know, we want everything as easy as possible so we can make access to get things to working. Essentially, that's a sprint car header. Um, it had a one and three quarter tube that's extremely long, and I should have measured. I, I didn't, but I think the next time I go, I will. But it had a three and a half inch collector, because that's another thing that plays a part. If you have a big collector versus a small collector, that's how quickly or slowly that that air slows down before it can bam right back for the reverse pulse. So anyway, it had a three and a half inch collector and a one and three quarter tube that was much longer. I brought these because this is going to my son's Nova and I just bought it for him. Now these are different, so let me explain. These are called a stepped header. This is another way to kind of re remediate some of the reversion too. It starts off with a one and three quarter tube that right here. This tube is one and seven eighths that goes all the way to the collector. So it goes from one and three quarter stepping up to one and seven eighths. So essentially it gets bigger. And then, so when the exhaust pulse comes back, it has to go into a smaller space, hurting reversion. That's the idea anyway. This one also had a smaller three inch collector. And the other thing that plays a part is collector length. How long this is has affects your pulse as well. They also have something called a merge collector, which I do have on the S10, which is extremely cool. It's got a cone that's on the inside and it kind of helps things as well, but those also have to be tuned to every combination. There's no one size fits all header. There's no one size fits all camshaft. Um, same thing. But so anyway, these had a three inch collector. So we have a half inch shorter collector, uh, diameter wise, and it's also was about a half inch shorter. So the actual dyno header was actually a little bit longer. The collector was. Um, the tube length was much longer, but it was one and three quarter. And I was really curious to see what difference this was make. So on the 406 and this configuration that I'm about to show you the dyno results for, it was a 406, 11.2 compression ratio, 260, 270 duration at 50 thousandths camshaft, 685 lift, 108 LSA. It had the Promax Project X 215 heads on it, completely stock. But in this configuration, when I tested this, I actually had a dual plane on when I was testing. So I had the AFR dual plane on it, 1000 CFM carburetor. Here are your results. These are overlays. So the red line, sorry, the black line, we're gonna start off with this black line you see here, that's the dyno headers. And you could tell it made a huge difference. The black line, sorry, the red line is those headers. So even though it's got a step and everything, you could tell it was worse. I mean, look, especially down low. This is what I mean. Every header is great at a certain point. And if you look, it's only great here. This is where the red line was better. Just a little bit. So we look from 6,800 to 7,000. Those headers were better. Anywhere else, it wasn't. Especially at peak torque, it dropped considerably. So, and by the way, some of you are going to ask, well, what about the air-fuel ratio? That must have affected it. It didn't, surprisingly. Um, not more than two tenths. So not enough that a jet change would make it. So maybe a jet change would have made a one. That's way more than one. That's like 15. So not enough to make a difference. I should point out, it's still making, with the dyno headers, with the dual plane, we're still making 601 horsepower with as-cast heads and a dual plane. That's impressive to me, especially with the dual plane. But anyway... Uh, just want to show you kind of how different they are. So point being is, pay attention to your headers. If there are different options available, so if you have a 7081 Camaro, there's a whole lot of uh, headers options available from bigger tube size, smaller tube size, different lengths. You can do quite, quite crazy things. But if you say you got an S10, you can only pretty much do fender well exits, so then they're either short or you can do these long lemon ones. And then there's a whole bunch of other combinations that way. But if you're a dragster, I have no idea why you're not devoting more of your time, especially if you're like the super comp guys. You will make more torque when you leave off your throttle stop if you spend more time with your headers. 
There's a reason why if you go back and watch the Engine Master, not watch, but read the Engine Master challenge back when there was actual competition, if you go back and look at those, you would see some crazy pictures of headers. The one thing I did not spend enough time on was headers because I didn't have enough money to devote into it. But the reason why those headers were so different looking, like they had people had different links, so they had adjusted the links, so that in other words, they could put extensions on to get them right. They had try wise where you might have these two come into one, and then those two come into one, and then those two come in together at different points. The reason why they did all that is because they were targeting a specific band to make the most torque on. And I could promise you, nobody's that was really competitive were the same because each engine's so different. And it also plays a part into the cylinder heads, the camshaft, it's so very different. That's why you can't say, well, this header is a piece of crap. Look how bad it did on that combination. On that combination. These ones could be great on something else. That's what makes headers so weird. That's where testing really, really does play a part. The other thing that could play a part is when you put, start putting exhaust on it. So there's a huge difference in it. So one, hopefully you guys got something out of this video, but headers are super important. Um, get the Pipe Max program and get you really close to what you should be. Um, but anyway, there's a reason for those. Now, something else I want to talk about, so that ends pretty much this part. If you like what you saw in this book, and the raw numbers are actually in this book, you can purchase this book on my website, wengines.com. You can go to my, on the homepage, there's a link to my online store. Right now, here's a special I'm having, and this will go all the way probably till Christmas or till the end of the year. Right now, for 100 bucks, you can get a PDF copy of every single book I've made this year, which I think there's six or seven for $100. I'll send all of them in a PDF, not the hard copy. If you're a channel member, don't do that. Just text me. Yours is only 20 bucks because you're a channel member. Um, you'll get all of them for 20 But if you're not a channel member, 100 bucks gets you every single book. So you get all this that's in here, all of the uh, other ones too, the big block Chevy ones, all of them. I'll be on a PDF for 100 bucks. And also on my website, I now have these. The new shirts came in, the new ones. It's the same except for I, I tested that. I've got a few sizes that are available. They're on my website as well. So go check that out. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Remember, I am no Superman. I don't port cast iron. Thanks for watching.